Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Matt, Jish, Mark, and we just finished playing The Others, which is a one versus many game. Essentially, each uh, hero, if you like, takes a character. In this case, I had PhD, who had the giant minigun. And you have a little miniature here, and you run around the board killing monsters. You can see there are lots of different kinds of monsters, but all the monsters are controlled by the bad guy, the Sin player, as it's called. Uh, in this case, Mark was playing Envy, so that's kind of the big bad guy, and there's a sort of big boss that's going to show up later uh, that he was playing. Um, but in terms of how you play the game, you're aiming to complete a set of objectives. Now this varies depending on the scenario, it's a scenario based game. So to start with, we had to uh, reach a maximum of corruption. Hmm, what is corruption? Well, every hero has a corruption track, and as you go through the game, various things are going to cause you to increase corruption, I'll come back to that. But we had to get one of our heroes to max out corruption, which would reveal a dark past card. Everyone had a sort of secret dark past. Uh, in my case, I was a psychopathy trigger. Um, I basically, when I got too corrupted, I started shooting everyone around me as well, all the heroes as well. So that was bad for us. Uh, but once you've done that, you then get to choose two routes. You either go down this route or down this route. Uh, this banished the puppeteer. There was a particular controller, I think she was called. We had to kind of kill her. Or we could choose to go down this route, which is to move the pentagram things. So there are certain symbols on the board. Again, I'll come back to those in a bit. But you're taking one of two different routes, and then depending on which route you took, we took this one. After completing that one, you would then go to the final section. In this case, there was a traitor in our midst, and we had to destroy the traitor hero when they popped up. That's this one over here. And if we manage to do that, then we win the game. So you're working through these objectives, and if you manage to do the final one, you win. At least the good guys win. Obviously, the bad guy wins if you, uh, all of you die. I'll explain how that works. So you all pick your heroes, and then on your turn, you have a couple of these activation to tokens. You sort of flip this over, and you get to take one action and then one move. You either move before or after your action. Uh, so I, for example, might decide to move for some reason into this space here, and then I could attack the monster. How does attacking work? Well, you roll a certain number of dice. So in my case, I roll three dice when I'm attacking, and there's a bunch of different symbols on these, um, but you're looking for fists, that's like the attack thing. Now each monster has a certain uh, stat, so which monster am I attacking? What stats does he yeah, have? The, that one with three and three. So he's got three attack dice, if you like, when he rolls, and three defense. So I need three fists to kill him. Uh, this protects me against corruption, we'll come back to that. Um, but this is like a wild card, so I can use that for whatever I want to. I can use it to be a fist, but when you roll it, I get to roll another dice. That's great, I'm roll dice, see if I can get another fist. Ha ha, I've got another fist. So I could decide then to make this a fist. I've got three fists, which is enough to kill the thing, but then it also gets to roll its dice. So because I'm in the same space as it, it rolls three dice, and the baddie dice are slightly different. <laughs> oh dear. So these are fists, which will be attacked, but whenever he rolls his exploding fist, he gets to roll two more dice. And, <laughs> oh no, he does more fists. So that would be a total of four damage. So although I killed him, he does four damage to me. And the way the damage works is you're putting wounds on this kind of track at the bottom here. Now you can decide where they go. Now, why is that important? Well, before I have my turn, you know I said the corruption increases, I can choose to increase voluntarily my corruption by one, and then I get whatever the space is underneath it, in this case it'd be an extra dice, and everything before it. But if it's covered up by a wound, you're not getting that bonus. So if I did it here, I'd get an extra attack, an extra defense, and I'd be rolling an extra dice. So that's quite powerful when you do it, but obviously the higher your corruption gets, the worse it is. If your corruption becomes maxed out, every time you take another corruption, you're taking a damage. If you take five damage, your hero dies. So that's bad. Other things that can happen, uh, you can roll this sort of Cthulhu tentacle type thing, which is corruption. So that would increase your corruption track, unless you roll the anti-corruption symbol. Uh, obviously the shields will block attacks if you manage to roll those. Um, are there any other symbols? Not on the uh, bandy dice. Um, but alternative to fighting when you're in a space, you can also take certain actions uh, to try and remove these tokens. So this pentagram thing actually... Mark, what does that do again? Uh, they get one extra dice if they're fighting. Oh, right, so that would give me an extra dice. So I can try and remove the pentagram potentially. There are some rules around this. Um, but for this, you're using the eye thing. So this is... I'm actually rubbish at this because I only get one dice. But I'd be rolling the dice and I'd be looking to get the eye symbol. There it is. For each eye I roll, I get to remove one of the tokens in the space. So there are various tokens on the board. As Mark says, this increases the number of dice the monsters roll. This is a fire token. If you move out of a space with fire, the baddie player rolls their dice, and if they get a fist, you will take a damage. 
Uh, this is a corruption token, which is the same thing when you move out of that space. They roll the dice, but this time, if they get a tentacle, you'll take a corruption. Uh, these are spawn spaces, so when uh, at the end of the round, uh, the baddie can spawn things and that they have to go on those spaces there. Some symbols you'll notice are pre printed, so there's like a pre printed corruption there, pre printed spawn space there. Um, so there's a number of different tokens on the board that generally are bad for us um, and we need to try and get rid of. So those the, that's one of the other main actions you can do is try and remove those. Uh, now when you die, this is quite important, the, you start with uh, a bunch of different heroes. There's like seven, I think. And we had, let's say, three starting heroes. And after one of your heroes dies, you just kind of get rid of him and you grab a new hero from the pile. Oh, here's another one. I'll be L, who doesn't start with any damage. And then I carry on playing with this one. There's like a spawn spot that you spawn at over here. Um, but when she dies, as she goes away, and we get another one. But you're limited. Once you get through all of yours, if somebody dies and you don't have any heroes left to take, then the heroes lose. So essentially, either you manage to complete the objectives and get through to the end, or too many of your heroes die and you lose. Each of the heroes has a special ability, which is quite nice, uh, so that varies it a bit. Uh, and the other important thing I should mention is the city tokens. So on your turn, if you're in a room space, so this is like a building, so this would be one area, this would be another one, so if you're in one of these buildings, you can take for free the city action, and you place your token on it, which stops anyone else doing it, um, but it, it'll do various things. So in this case, this will heal me by two, and remove one of my corruption, that's great. If you do it in this space, you're gonna get two bits of equipment. So there's a bunch of equipment cards, so you could get something like this, which would heal a wound at the start of your turn, that'd be very handy. Uh, this one would let you, at the start of your turn, you can destroy an acolyte. That's one of the uh, policemen in our particular scenario, these little brown guys here. Um, so the equipment's quite helpful, uh, and you sort of pick the equipment up and buff up your character in that way. But essentially, you're running around taking turns, trying to kill the monsters and complete the objectives. Now one other thing I will just say is that in terms of the bad guy, they don't take the turn in the normal way as such. After anybody takes the turn, so after I moved into here, let's imagine I killed this guy and survived, then uh, the bad guy can move one character, so this guy might decide to move into here, to my space, and then attack me potentially. Uh, they're spending, um, you know, when they do that, they have to spend um, an activation token for one of these. So they have a limited number of times in which they can decide after somebody's turn to activate a monster, move it in an attack. Um, but essentially, they're acting between the hero's turns, sort of when they see fit. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. As I say, if you manage to complete the objective, you win. Otherwise, if the heroes die too many times, they lose. What do we think? Uh, it was nice. It was, well, it was, it was brutal, uh, so it wasn't nice. Um, but yeah, I liked it. It was uh, it's simple enough to play. Um, you know, the rules exploration was fairly quick, and everything made sense. You know, all the iconography and stuff made sense. Um, so yeah, I'd like to play it a few more times. I don't know if this is um, like a, an advanced mission um, that I've come in on. Um, but yeah, it was it was quite difficult. Um, so yeah, I'd like to give it another another couple of tries to see how it goes. But these these one against many ones are always they're meant to be hard, uh, meant to be challenging. So so yeah, it's it's nice and simple. Um, yeah, okay. like Josh, this is the first time I'm playing this kind of a game, so I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, it has a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different heroes. There are many more than what we see over here, apart from these seven. So I would want to play this again a couple of times and. Same thing. Okay. Mark? Yeah, so I got this one on a bit of a whim because it was cheap on Amazon and it was good enough that I went out and then got Kickstarter Pledge, which is why it's got a lot of extra stuff in it. But that, I mean, that's a good sign. Um, I think that Jonathan's rules explanation was rare to be long, but he literally taught you that pretty much the entire game in that period. For this style of game, it's actually pretty streamlined. It's like it's pretty much as complex as Zombicide, but it's far, far, far more interesting with a lot more with a lot more interesting things going on than something like that. I think that after seeing a couple of versions of it, the uh, bad guys play differently. They do try to concentrate on one particular thing, like envy. Essentially, if you're taking items, you get damage because other people get envious, or you can choose either you take damage or other people take damage, which is quite cool. So 
if I take an item, I can either choose to take damage or everybody else takes corruption. It gives the player an interesting decision on because items are really good, and I like that. It's a uh, there's a good thing for me, but it's also a good thing for the Sins player. Um, the mission scenes play differently. This one was focused around corruption. The one played for was more of a fighting scenario. There's a lot of fighting in all of them, but this definitely we were taking a lot of corruption and having to balance: do I take the corruption for extra dice and extra abilities, or do I think we're going to die because of corruption? And yeah, everything's there's a nice, nice amount of variability. The mission seems fairly interesting. It's all pretty tight. Uh, I think it's fun playing on both sides, getting to play it. So yeah, for this style of game, actually, I really, really like it. I really like the fact that the, uh, the sim player's actions are not just you go, I go. They are you go, do I go or do I save this for, for an even more key moment? I've got four, so I can take one in every two, or like, generally it's one every two players. That's like it's it's an interesting additional decision, along with the other really cool decision of, of like say the corruption. Do I take the extra abilities? But I am technically moving myself into a worse position, and it's and those sort of decisions suddenly so streamlined make it just keep its head slightly above the rest of this style of game. Rating? I really like it, so I give it eight and a half. Okay, Josh. Uh, eight. Matt? I would give it seven and a half at the moment. Um, could go up after a few more plays. Okay. Yeah, I'd agree with a lot of what Mark said. I think it is a very good game. I do think you need to like this kind of game. It's quite long, but it's very cooperative. So all the way through, we were constantly discussing, is it better for this person to go here and do this, or maybe he should go there? Now, obviously, that might depend on your group, but I really enjoy that kind of cooperative experience. Uh, and there's lots and lots to think about in this. It's very strategic. You get extra dice if you're fighting in the same space as one of the other heroes. So that makes a big deal. You know, if your base dice is three, going up to four is quite a significant chunk. And the monsters can be quite hard to kill. So making sure you're in the right position at the right times, using the different city abilities is really, really key. There's this one kind of aerial bombardment thing, laser, which kind of kills a monster instantly, which is super powerful, but you can't use it all the time. It's tricky, and so just so many interesting decisions there. It's very hard playing against um, the Sin player if they are good and know what they're doing. I mean, that tends to be the way of these one versus many games. So it can be quite challenging depending on who's going to take that role. Um, but still, as a gaming experience, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. I would be on 8 out of 10. Well, thanks for watching. That was... The Others.